And uh, well, back to you today's second video. We've done the uh, CFS six month look at. I released that this morning. Gonna have a look at the uh, snow cover over Siberia um, this afternoon. Very interesting developments currently taking place across Siberia in terms of the snow cover uh, building up and uh, very extensive snow cover starting uh, to pile up very, very early. Now, of course, I normally do this in my uh, winter roundup videos. I did it last week um, saying that we'd had a very good start to the uh, snow cover season across Siberia through September. And, uh, of course, we've got the next winter roundup video coming up uh, next Sunday. So. Uh, I'll be having a look at this again next week, but I wanted to just look at the snow cover in isolation of everything else today because uh, it really is quite a remarkable uh, situation that's developing across Siberia just at the moment. Now, before I go on that, just talk about the advertising. There's some green keyword ads on my pages at gasmobiles.com. You broadcast over green keywords, they display ads. If you interact with the keyword, though, if you click through the keyword, you'll go to the sponsor's website, and by doing that, you're supporting gasmobiles.com. Thanks very much. Uh, for doing it. So this is where we was this time last week um, or not this time last week but when I did the, the last video on Friday the 27th of September um, this was the chart that we was looking at uh, for the uh, second winter roundup video and a very good start to the snow cover season uh, we'd have through September really uh, extensive snow cover there piling up across uh, Siberia just show you uh, the area that we're interested in, in case uh, uh, you're not uh, aware. It's sort of this area here. This would be uh, actually better change the colour there. I think we've got to uh, go, go to a different colour. Let's try and go to deep one. There we go. So this is the area that we're looking at, or that we're interested in, through the course of the, the autumn, particularly uh, focused around Russia. And this is the area that's very interesting, uh, or was very interesting last week, with the snow cover building up across central and northeastern parts of uh, Siberia. Well, I said it was a very good start to the season through uh, September. It have, was a very good start. But just for what's happened in the past week, an explosion of the snow has taken place. I'll go back to, uh, sep to, uh, to September 27th. That's chart September 27th. Just look how much snow has appeared in the past week up to, uh, when I'm doing the video now, Saturday the 5th of October. A huge amount of snow cover has increased over the past week across much of central and eastern uh, Siberia. We've even got little flakes of snow uh, turning up across western parts of Russia, beginning to uh, push in towards the populated areas of Russia. Uh, we see little patches of snow. That's very, very unusual uh, for this early in October. Now, most of that is going to mount. It's not going to last, I don't think, but certainly this area here, uh, through central and eastern parts of Siberia, really, really interesting uh, how much snow cover uh, we've got going on there. Absolutely massive amounts of snow uh, for the time of uh, the year. So let's see how many years um, have this much snow cover at this point in the uh, season. We can only go back to 19 so this was uh, the first chart we can look at, uh, the 5th of October uh, 1998. And we doing pretty well, actually, uh, at this point in 1998. Not as good as we are now. This is where we are now. Uh, this is where we was on the 5th of uh, October 1998. Uh, we, lag we was lagging behind, or uh, we was lagging behind in 98 compared to uh, where we are now. But that's pretty good, actually. You're going to see there aren't many years that come close uh, to that in 1998. Uh, 1999, well, very clearly, uh, we're ahead of uh, 99. Uh, many, many more uh, miles of snow cover across Siberia compared to this point in 99 going through to 2000 well look at that hardly anything was happening in 2000 things really hadn't even got going so comparing the two it's like comparing apples and oranges there really is uh, no comparison to the uh, snow cover we have now compared to 2000 2001 Again, uh, we're well ahead of 2001, quite clearly. Uh, massive amounts of snow this year, not that much uh, appearing in 2001. Now, 2002 is the year that uh, perhaps is beating uh, where we was now. Let's have a look at where or where we are now. Let's have a look at where we are now again. There we go. Uh, this is where we are in 2013. That's where we was in 2002. I think we've got just a little bit more in 2002 than we have in 2013 but it's hard to uh, say really with that much confidence because the snow cover uh, was like this uh, through 2002 so it was further 
uh, that way, uh, but it wasn't as far uh, south. So maybe if you compare them, there's perhaps not a lot in it because if there's uh, much more to the south uh, at the moment uh, in 2013 compared to 2002. So whilst there was more in 2002 to the west, there was less to the south, whereas now we've got slightly less to the west but more uh, to the south. So hard to say really, but 2002 is certainly uh, sort of the year that we did very well. Uh, with that snow cover. Going on to 2003, nothing really had happened at this point. Very uh, much a lagging start to the year was uh, 2003. 2004, well, we were ahead of that. 2005, again, well ahead at this point in uh, 05. 2006, well ahead uh, again uh, right now compared to 2006 and 2007. That was the year of the catastrophic <coughs> melt across the Arctic, of course, with all of that yellow indicating excuse me, the ice being pushed back into the centre of the Arctic Ocean. Terrible melt season. Uh, that one was 2008 again. Look how much more snow can we have right now compared to 2008. 2009, things hadn't really started in 2009. 2011, we have skipped through 2010 because uh, the chart uh, for this day, specifically in 2010, isn't available, unfortunately. So skipping through 2011, very little happening. And in 2012, 2012, well, things were beginning to develop. Remember last year, we had a very quick build-up of snow cover across uh, Siberia through October. We had a really poor September, but things did develop through October. And things were just starting to develop this time uh, last year. We were starting to get some snow cover appearing. But quite obviously and apparently, um, we're well ahead of this point. Uh, last year and look how much ice we've got in the Arctic as well this year uh, compared to last year that's very very dramatic uh, increase in ice so a huge increase in snow cover across uh, Siberia through the course of week we was already doing very well anyway uh, through September we had a really good start this just compounds things and it really is starting to build up now and it's becoming very very obvious uh, that uh, we're going to have an early and extensive snow cover season, certainly for central and eastern parts of uh, Russia. We've got so much snow there that I don't think really uh, we can sort of see a lot of that melting away. So what we've got there across central and eastern parts of Siberia, I think we're going to tend to stick with that. And if models are right, they're uh, looking pretty cold actually going through uh, across Siberia through the next couple of weeks. So if the models are right, we're going to see more of this snow um, piling up. Now, the idea behind all this is is that uh, if the snow piles up very quickly through uh, the autumn, through October across Siberia, it helps to embed, bed in uh, those Siberian highs. And I think we are looking at certainly a very early start of snow cover season. That can only help uh, really with uh, developing the big blocking areas of high pressure across the Siberian plain. It's also important for North America, they uh, can also uh, benefit from this in terms of getting cold weather through the course of winter because sometimes, uh, I'll just explain, that sometimes what happens is that the uh, blocking highs build across uh, Siberia and they will start to uh, push through uh, the Arctic and go that way down into uh, North America as opposed to going uh, that way in towards uh, Eurasia. That can happen sometimes, so we do have to watch out for that. This doesn't guarantee that we're going to get a cold winter across uh, Europe, but I think by uh, any stretch of the imagination, it certainly helps. It certainly isn't doing any harm uh, for our winter prospects, but there are many other things that we have to take on board as well. That's the point I'm trying to get across. This isn't uh, the one and only factor. There are many other things that we've got to take into account. Count. Uh, finally, just want to talk about the uh, uh, Arctic sea ice extent. That has rebounded very, very dramatically. Uh, 2013, in terms of the uh, Arctic uh, melt season, is this black line uh, here. We was uh, not as bad as 2012. There's 2012, the, the lowest ever recorded. And we was up on uh, 20, uh, 2011, 20, uh, 2007 and 2008, sorry, which is all of these years here. So we're in this black line, or we was, or we are in this black line here 
on a par through most of them out season with 2009 and 2010. But unlike 2009-2010, just look how this black line has rebounded in the past week or two. And now we are actually on a par with this year here, 2006. And 2006 was the last time um, we had a decent sort of melt season. It wasn't uh, too bad, uh, 2006. Uh, so from a very uh, much lower base in 2006, we have actually caught up now uh, with 2006. And you'll see from all of these lines, all of these lines are individual uh, years going back to 2006. You'll see that no year has uh, come up like uh, 2013 has. Um, most of the years sort of uh, have a very, very gradual decline from the minimum. Um, admittedly, uh, this year here, 2009, did come up quite a bit, uh, but not as quickly or as uh, dramatically as 2013 has come up. So, very unique sort of year uh, at the moment, uh, 2013. In terms of the uh, sea uh, ice extent, um, and the way we've rebounded from the minimum of the uh, mount season. No year since 2006 has done what 2013 is doing in terms of rebounding that uh, ice from the minimum. And no other year since 2002 has built up such an extensive, uh, such an extensive sort of uh, Siberian snow cover this early. So whatever happens, we're in sort of uh, uncharted territory, certainly for the last decade, I think. Um, in terms of what's happening in the Arctic and across Siberia, we are very much in uncharted territory. Uh, it's going to be very interesting how this plays out. Um, and we're just going to wait and see, really, what's going to happen. I think that the way the snow cover is building up across Siberia certainly helps to embed the Siberian highs. It's not going to do our winter prospects any harm. It may, there may be other things that will negate this, and it won't come to much, but certainly it's not going to do any harm. And it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. I certainly think that for North America, uh, they're in for it this winter. And it could well be that much of uh, Eurasia is in, t in for it as well. Whether it gets quite as far west as far west of uh, Europe into British Isles as ever it's on the toss of the coin there are so many other things that can impact our weather because we're right next to the Atlantic um, so we're just going to have to wait and see but really interesting developments that's it for now I hope you found both of today's videos interesting if you haven't seen the CFS six month look head yet to check it out it's just underneath uh, this video um, we're in full winter mode now things are really picking up aren't they that's it for now thanks for watching